working on Magic and Bird, one of the most memorable things for me was was the grind. It was my first. This was my first major project with you know major backing, um, you know budget, and producers coming in and. It was my first time getting to do that. And I say the grind because like I would I would get on a plane from San Diego, touchdown in Atlanta, airport to studio into the booth, start rec recording the verses because we only had four or five days to work. And we're getting four hours of sleep, you know, each night. We got like 30 songs done in like three weeks. I never, I never thought I could do that. Um, so it was definitely a confidence boost, man. And then getting to do it in Atlanta, which right now, I don't know if you're paying attention, but that is like for hip hop right now, that's ground zero, you know? So getting to do it there, a and is coming in and out of the studio, like, oh, I was just with Migos, I was just with Metro Boom, and then they come here and then they're listening to our stuff, you know? And, and whenever we had writer's block, one of the most memorable moments is whenever we'd have writer's block, what we'd do, instead of staying in the studio, we'd, um, we'd like rent a car, throw on like these beats we were, we were working on, these songs we were trying to write, and we'd drive around Atlanta for hours, just music blasting with the, with the voice notes recording on our phone, just freestyling and like goofing around and like talking. And then we'd play it back in the studio, like, yo, that was dope. Oh, I remember when we saw that that Caprice classic drive by, and you, you, you know, like we we rapped about it. So I don't know. There was something about getting a marinade in in that setting in that in Atlanta while doing a, a predominantly trap record. Like it, it helped and made it real special. The difference between me making Clown Town and me making Magic and Bird. I've grown a lot since making Clown Town, you know, now with Magic and Bird out. Um, Clown Town was my, was my, you know, my bedroom closet record. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it was, it was the buying beats off SoundCloud and, and SoundClick and YouTube record. Um, so I think I've grown in confidence now. Like I feel confident that I could walk into a room full of producers and and actually arrange and compose something and and build something bigger than myself. Um, whereas with Clown Town, it was special, but it was different because it was just me having fun rhyming over you know beats I heard on the internet and paying the dude a hundred bucks for the beat, you know, which worked out. It was awesome the way it worked out, but Magic and Bird was. It was professional. It was, uh, if there's any way to put it, I feel, I feel like a professional now because of that album. Um, and that's the, that's how I want to make music from now on with a lot of people in like an incubator space almost, you know, for blocks of time, just away, um, away from everything else and, and making the project.